I have an example here of the differential length, area, and volume. And my picture looks like a part of a cylinder. And the original coordinates were given um, in Cartesian coordinates. You can see A, B, C, D, F, O. And um, what I've done in blue is transform them to cylindrical coordinates. So um, uh, this is up to you. Maybe maybe the points are given in Cartesian coordinates, and you re you have to realize that uh, yeah, this looks like a cylinder or a cylindrical problem, and so I'm going to need to convert the points. So I've done that. So for example, point C, which is at zero five ten in Cartesian coordinates, has a radius of five, an angle with the x-axis of pi over two, and then a height of ten. So I've converted that there in blue. Now we're gonna we're gonna go through parts A through F, which deals with uh, length, surface, area, and volume and as we do this I want you to keep in mind this question what is changing okay if you can answer that question you're in good shape not just for this problem but uh, for the next section and 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 in future chapters and in, in, in the course so what is changing so part a we're gonna find the length BC now obviously the, the length BC is 10 because if you answer this question what is changing uh, the only thing that's changing is the Z coordinate right the, uh, the, the radius is not changing the, uh, the, the phi is not changing right and uh, only Z Z changes from 0 to 10 so obviously the answer is 10 but let's do it formally so the differential displacement because Z is the thing that's changing is just dz times the unit vector in the z direction. In other words, uh, d rho is zero because rho is not changing. You remember d represents a small change in. So d rho is zero plus d phi is also zero because phi is not changing. So this is the differential displacement. And uh, if we take the, because we're, we're not interested in the, the directed um, length, right? We're in, interested in just the length, which is a scalar. So if we take the magnitude of this equation, then we just get dL equals, and then the length or the magnitude of the right side, well, the, the, the vector has a, uh, a displacement, or excuse me, the vector has a magnitude of 1, so we just have dL equals dz there. Okay, so now we say that the length L, then if we integrate, so if we integrate both sides left and right, then on the left we just get L, and then we have to integrate Z, and Z goes from 0 to 10. So I'm just going to put a little Z here. Z goes from 0 to 10. And uh, if you're not used to putting the variable there in just the bounds, you should maybe get used to putting the variable there because we're going to have double, triple integrals and it's easy to lose track of which variable it is you're talking about. So I'm going to put the variable there, z equals 0 to 10 dz. Okay, so when I integrate, you know, um, dz, right, I just get z, and then when I put in 10 and minus what I put in, when I put in 0, and so that gives me 10. Right, earth-shattering result there. But you see how answering what is changing helped us here. So let's try B. So now we're going to go from the, the length uh, C, D, from C to D. So D is over here. So we're going from 0, 5, uh, excuse me, in cylindrical coordinates, we're going from 5 pi over 2, 10, uh, over here, which is 5, 0, 10. It got, it got cut off there, but it's... Uh, it's got a radius of 5. So answer the question, what is changing when you go from C to D or from D to C? What is changing there? Well, the radius is not changing because the radius is 5 here and it's 5 at C. Right? Phi is changing, right? The angle is changing. The angle is 0 because it aligns it at the x-axis at D. But then the angle is pi over 2 at point C. And z is not changing because uh, the height is still staying at 10. So we've answered the question, what is changing? And then so the differential displacement then is just rho d phi, right, times that unit vector in the phi direction. So l let me just remind you that in general, the differential displacement 
in cylindrical coordinates is rho, is, excuse me, is d rho times a unit vector in the rho direction plus rho d phi times a unit vector in the phi direction plus dz times a unit vector in the z direction. Okay, so what we've said is that rho is not changing in part b, so d rho is zero, and z is not changing in part b, so dz is zero. So what we're left with is rho d phi times this unit vector in the phi direction. Okay, and just like in the previous part, I'm only interested in the length. I'm not direct. I'm not interested in the directed length. So I'm just going to take the magnitude of both sides. So that gives me a scalar dl is equal to rho d phi. Okay, because this, the magnitude of the unit vector is just 1. Okay, so now I integrate both sides. I, I have a differential length and I want to get the length. So I integrate both sides, L, and then uh, I've got rho d phi. So phi goes from 0, right? Phi goes from 0 to pi over 2, then d phi. Okay, well, as far as phi is concerned, rho is a constant. So rho can come out, and then, uh, then when I integrate 1 d phi, I just get phi, and I plug in pi over 2, right? So it just gives me rho times pi over 2. And what is rho? Well, rho is the radius. That's 5. So this gives me 5 pi over 2 is the answer there. Okay, again, that's the length cd. All right, moving right along, C. We want the surface area now, A, B, C, D. So A, A, B, so it's curved. A, B, then goes up and comes back. So it's kind of like the front of that thing. All right, the surface area. So remember that the differential surface area, the directed area, DS vector, is rho, well, Actually, let's back up. What what is changing? Let's let's answer that question. So, along this surface is is rho changing? Is the radius changing? Uh, no, it's not because we're not going in towards the z-axis. We're just staying at a constant radius. Is theta uh, is phi changing? Yes. So at x or at point A, phi is zero, and then when we, when we go to point B, phi is pi over two, and, and then we go back. So yes, phi is changing. Is z changing? Is the height changing along the surface area? Yes, it is, right? A and B are at a height of zero, and C and D are at a height of 10. So both phi and, um, both phi and z are changing. So then ds is, rho d phi dz, right? And then remember the, the direction of that thing is normal to those things, so the direction is in uh, the rho direction there. Okay, so just as before, we're interested in the magnitude of this uh, area, so we're just going to say that ds is equal to rho d phi dz, like this, okay, because the magnitude of the unit vector is 1, and then we integrate both sides to get the surface area s. So s equals, and so we're going to integrate this thing. So z, this is why we put the variable here, z is going from 0 to 10, and phi is going from 0 to pi over 2. So I've got this. Okay, so rho is constant. So as far as phi and z are concerned, rho can come out of that integral. And rho is 5. So I'll just put 5 there. Then we've got 5 times z integrated from 0 to 10. And then when I do the integral of phi, or uh, when I integrate phi, right, I get just pi over 2 dz like this. And then um, pi over 2 is a constant, so as far as z is concerned, so I can bring that out in front, and I've got 5 pi over 2, right? 
integral z goes from 0 to 10 of dz. And so I integrate that, I get 10. And so this guy is 50 pi over 2, or 25 pi. Okay. All right, moving on. Part D, what I'm going to do over here on the left. Again, the surface area now. But A, B, O. So A, B, O. So it's kind of like this wedge, right? A, B, O. So again, we're going to ask the question, what is changing? when I go across ABO like that. Well, the radius now is changing, right? Because O is at a radius of zero, A and B are a radius of five. So rho is changing. The angle phi is also changing because A is at, a, a, at an angle of zero, B is at an angle of pi over two, but the height now is not changing. Z is not changing. So DS then, what is left then, ds is rho, right, d rho, d phi, times that unit vector in the z direction. Because remember, the, the differential in the, the phi direction was rho d phi, so that's where this rho is coming from, rho d phi, because phi is changing, so we need rho d phi, and then also, um, rho is changing so we need d rho and then remember the 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 surface area element is perpendicular the direction is perpendicular to the surface area so that's a unit vector in the z direction okay but the unit vector doesn't is not directed here we're just looking for the surface area itself and so we just take the magnitude of both sides and we get ds is equal to that should be a capital s by the way ds is equal to rho d rho d phi like this and then we need to integrate both sides to get s okay so phi is going from 0 to pi over 2 right and rho is going from 0 Right, because at point O, rho is 0, and at point A and B, rho is 5. So rho goes from 0 to 5 of rho d rho d phi. And by the way, it doesn't matter the order that you're integrating these guys in. You can switch the order of integration if you'd like. Okay. So we're doing the, the rho first. So when I integrate rho d rho, I get one-half rho squared from 0 to 5 and then I have the d phi there so when I evaluate that I plug in 5 for rho that's 25 so 25 halves and that's a constant so I can bring that out 25 halves and then phi goes from 0 to pi over 2 of d phi so when I integrate that I just get pi over 2 and so my answer is 25 pi over 4, it looks like. 25 pi over 4. All right, part E. Part E, the surface area. A-O-F-D. A so A-O-F-D. So that's actually a square, right? So you can get the, get the area of a square using, you know, base times height. But we're going to do it again using uh, this differential uh, area. So we, we're going to answer the question, what is changing? What is changing? So if I go on that area, first of all, rho is changing because rho is uh, 0 at the origin and rho is 5 at point A, D. And then uh, we, phi is not changing though. Phi is 0 on that surface, right? And z is changing. z goes from 0 to 10. So what is changing? Uh, rho and z. So that makes our differential surface element, that should be, again, that should be capital S. That makes our differential surface element to be uh, d rho, right, because rho is changing, and dz, because z is changing, and its direction is in the phi direction. 
So I'm only interested in the magnitude of this thing, you know, the area. So I'll take the magnitudes of both sides. So this is ds equals d rho dz, like this. The magnitude of the unit vector is 1, right? And so now I'll integrate both sides to get s. s equals, OK, so z goes from 0 to 10. And rho goes from 0 to 5. d rho dz. And so when I integrate d rho, I just get rho. And I plug in 5 and 0, I get 5. And then when I do the same thing for z, I get 10. And no surprise there, the answer is 50, right? The area of a square, or not a square, a rectangle. OK, and then finally, let's, let's do part F. That's, feel free to pause the video if you need to. Go into part F. The volume of this whole thing now, A, B, D, C, F. Oh, so remember the differential volume dv is rho times d rho d phi dz. So why is that? Again, it comes down to this question, what is changing? So across this whole thing, of course, everything is changing, right? The angle is changing, the height is changing z, the radius is changing. Okay, so we need all of those elements multiplied together. The rho comes from this thing in, in orange here. The, uh, the the differential element uh, rho d phi. Okay, so now I want to get the volume, so I'm going to integrate both sides. So I get v on the left when I integrate, and then I'm going to integrate uh, z. Z goes from 0 to 10, right? And I'm going to integrate phi. Phi goes from 0 to 2 pi, or excuse me, uh, pi over 2. And then rho, I'm going to integrate, and rho goes from 0 to 5. In this thing, rho, d rho, d phi, d z. Right? You see why we label the the bounds. Right? Okay, so I'll do the inside integral first. Okay, one. This is one half rho squared from zero to five and then d phi dz. Okay, so when I plug in 5, I get 25 over 2. So this becomes z goes from 0 to 10. Phi goes from 0 to pi over 2. 25 over 2, d phi dz. So as far as phi and z are concerned, I mean, 25 over 2 certainly is a constant. So then when I integrate d phi, I just get phi from, and, and then I plug in pi over 2. So I pick up another constant, pi over 2. And then when I integrate dz, I just get z, and then I plug in 10, I get another constant 10. And so it looks like I get, what is that, 250 pi over 4. Is that 250 pi over 4? We'll just write 250. Uh, that's 125 pi over 2. And that's the answer.